Genshin Impact is a game that you should be taking at your own pace. It's a marathon, not a sprint. But there are a ton of things you can do to make sure your experience is as smooth as possible. Hello friends, it's Livid here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming. And today I'm sharing everything I wish I knew sooner about the hottest gacha RPG on the market right now, Genshin Impact. Like most gacha games, early decisions and choices can be akin to sliding down a slope with ease or struggling to make a steep climb later on. Genshin Impact is no exception, but as I mentioned in our Worth Your Time review, it is one of the most fair. Knowledge, however, goes a long way to making your experience with all the game systems go smoothly. So without further delay, let's kick it off with the first tip, one that is incredibly useful when you are just starting out. If you are aiming to progress quickly early on, these first few chests will have your characters hitting a higher power curve through immediate three-star items. These chests also grant massive early adventurer's experience, which is key to leveling up and progressing rapidly. These are more effective when secured early on rather than later, despite awarding the same amount of experience. The best thing about them, though, is that they are directly in your path of progression. The first is a chest immediately to your left when you first start the game. Heck, even I missed this one and had a double back. Head into the water on this side of the beach and just normal swim towards this rock. Don't sprint swim or you will drown early on. Behind this rock is a precious chest. Once you make it to Mondstadt, there are three chests in particular that will give you some great starting gear in addition to the large Adventurer XP we just talked about. Head to the Adventurer's Guild, but don't head inside. Climb way up to the top of the structure and inside one of the four ramparts. You will find another high tier chest here. From here, Grab the waypoint and head down into the statue plaza. Activate this little wispy light and a ring trial will appear. Simply follow along this path and a chest will be waiting for you at the very end. Last up, head to the top of the cathedral, way up by the bell. Here you will find another high tier chest and with that, enjoy the massive early level boost. While we are on the topic of chests, as soon as you start getting depths keys from some of the ruins, find an appropriate shrine and use them. These chests do not scale over time in terms of rewards and are actually better to go after right away due to the large amount of adventurers XP they grant, making them a huge boost to early level adventurers. They also just each have a large fixed amount of loot that will benefit you greatly early on. Now, in the same vein of things, this one should be obvious, but I have to say it, explore everything thoroughly. I see a lot of players going about leveling and advancing completely the wrong way. Sure, killing enemies awards experience, but you want to explore everything as you are progressing through the main story. You are essentially trying to minimize your downtime between each major story beat. Do not grind enemies for character experience though. It is by far the worst source of XP in the entire game. Opening chests, doing side quests, your main quest, and everything in that adventurer's handbook you have is going to award you vastly more experience. While you're at it, collect everything you find. Seriously, I can't even tell you how important foods, ores, plants, and more becomes as you get into the gear crafting and ascending your characters to their next tiers. It gets really expensive, and even something like a million mora can deplete in roughly 30 seconds later on. Start saving up early on, and reap the benefits later. Before we go any further, I want to just take a second to thank all of our Patreon supporters. If you like Legacy Gaming and want to help us out even more, consider donating just a few bucks to the channel. Every penny we make goes right back into the community, so check out the link below and sign up today. Now, as you are exploring, consider placing markers on your map. You have access to a whopping 99 available pins to put down and name, allowing you to place markers all over the map and delete them at any time. Now, these are great if you want to come back to a puzzle, to a chest, resource location, or general secret later on. Do not wait till later on to start marking your map. I know I regretted doing so when I tried to figure out exactly what I've done and what I missed. There is also this amazing map resource in the community, which I will link below, that shows you the location of just about every single thing in the game. Try and use this a majority of the time and use your map in game for pins for your own personal reminders. As you're exploring, stamina is likely going to be a source of frustration as it pleats relatively quickly. When climbing, try and avoid jumping up the wall as basic climbing is actually more stamina efficient, allowing you to climb much further. 
If you do find yourself running low on stamina and still aren't going to make it, make sure you have a sliver left. Release from the wall and do a ground slam attack. Now you may lose HP doing this, but it will make sure you don't just straight up die when you hit the ground. This also particularly translates to swimming as well. Sprint swimming will consume much more stamina than just slowly swimming. As a side note to this, always carry a stamina food around with you. You can consume it during a rough situation and continue on exploring without missing a beat. Healing is another thing you can make extremely efficient. It's explained quite quickly as you are rushing through the early game, but statues of the seven heal you. Early on, I found myself entering the menus to manually heal my characters at these statues. But if you look at the bottom right, you can set the threshold to automatically heal you if you have less than 100% health. This means if you teleport or walk by the statue with anything less than 100%, it will fully heal you without needing to interact with it. It's seriously time-saving. Now, we're going to dive a little deeper into progression tips, especially if you're free to play. Keep your focus on one or two characters in the beginning, and maybe a third later on. Upgrades are going to get expensive, and you may find yourself quickly running out of resources, resulting in your progression stagnating. Try to make sure you have one main damage dealer and one supporting style character early on that can carry your team through most of the content. Your main damage dealer should be your main investment and should be prioritized above all else. Speaking of characters and experience, do not use your purple tier experience books at lower levels. These are incredibly useful for leveling your characters at higher levels due to the extreme amount of XP it takes to level as you progress further with each character, making these the most effective tools to use later on. For the early game, stick with your green and blue books and save the purple ones for when they can really make an impact. Another great source of experience is the Leyline Blossoms, boss encounters, and domain challenges but they all require resin to claim the rewards. Original resin replenishes over time, but make sure you are never capped out at 120 out of 120. This is because you are technically losing valuable XP since you passively gain one resin every eight minutes. This means every eight minutes, if you are capped out, you are losing out on opportunities to do challenges for valuable rewards, thus less experience. Also, you will obtain a consumable at points called fragile resin. Do not use these before you hit Adventurer Rank 30, because you ideally should save them for when you begin your 4-5 to five star artifact grind at level 30. Given that you are only able to earn a limited amount of resin for free each day without spending Primo Gems, having a large reserve of resin consumables to use when you need it later on could help progress quicker. Now speaking of artifacts, avoid leveling your 1 and 2 star artifacts. Sure, you can take leveled artifacts and infuse them into your higher tier ones later on, but there is always a flat 15% XP loss when you use a leveled artifact or weapon to boost another. Three stars can be okay to enhance, especially if you are really lacking on four star artifacts, but upgrade three stars sparingly only as you absolutely need them. When it comes to upgrading and even crafting, materials can run out quickly. As soon as you hit Adventurer Rank 14, start sending a character or two out on expeditions if you aren't already using them. You can set them to go on four, eight, 12 or 20 hour intervals, with each increase granting better rewards for when they return. This is essentially free passive resources for doing almost nothing. Just know that the character you set on an expedition will be unavailable for that time that it's gone. Now let's move on to a few tips regarding combat. The one I found most essential is to use the environment to your advantage. If it's raining, everything is wet, thus electro, cryo, and even pyro based damage to a degree is going to repeatedly combo with those attacks. Or, if you see a ton of grass around enemies, light it on fire to keep an AoE burn field going. Pay attention to your surroundings, and use them to your advantage. Understanding how the elemental combos in this game actually work is also key. They aren't just a boost to damage, but they also have specific effects they trigger upon comboing, and even in the order that they combo. This chart here should be your best friend while learning this system. What order and when to do these during key fights can be the difference between breezing through a piece of content or struggling the whole time. In order to have access to a variety of elemental options, you're inevitably going to head into the wish section to roll for a few new characters. If you are at all confused with the difference between intertwined fates and acquaint fates, just know this. Intertwined fates are almost always better to stock up on because they are specifically used for the limited time banners. The ones that are usually promotional with better odds at certain characters and items. The Acquaint Faints, on the other hand, are typically for the basic banners with a larger loot pool and little to nothing special about them. Last on our list of helpful tips is this. 
Why try and roll for a character or even a weapon when sometimes they are available to you completely for free? Check your events. There will be special offers that sometimes reward you with free content. One of the big ones is to get your Spiral Abyss done up through floor 3-3 to make sure you snag the free Jeanlin character before the event goes away. She's incredibly good and a blast to play. If you are watching after this offer has expired, still keep your eyes peeled here every day to make sure you don't miss these. And there you have it friends, everything I wish I knew sooner about Genshin Impact. If you have a tip that you'd like to share, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, consider smashing that like button and subscribing to Legacy Gaming. While you're at it, remember you can always join us on Discord, our community is spread across dozens of great games, so click the link below and join today. My name is Livid, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.